Ryan with Miss Dog Geek here, and today we're going to start construction on the QDX from QRP Labs. Partner, I think you're full of it, because ain't nobody got a QRP Labs QDX yet. They ain't been shipped. Okay, okay, okay. I, I, you have a point. Uh, the QDX hasn't been shipped yet, but that doesn't mean we can't start working on it. All you need is a couple of inductors, and I happen to have those. So in the QRP Labs QDX uh, manual, it says which inductors you need and what to do to them. So today, we're going to get started on what's probably going to be considered the most difficult, which actually isn't that difficult. And that's going to be L12. What's L12, you say? I'm glad you asked. L12 is the inductor. It's a, actually a switched multi-tap inductor for the bandpass filter for the QDX. And what that means is it's got multiple taps. In other words, instead of being one continuous set of windings, it's a continuous set of windings with an attachment to some of them. And that attachment is done by adding an extra big loop instead of a small, tiny uh, winding. And you tap into that loop and the, the uh, uh, QDX switches inductors based on which band uh, the uh, is selected for the QDX. And so it's actually not the first step. There's several other steps before it, but this is the part I have on hand that I can start with. So that's where I'm starting. So uh, it's actually uh, step 2.9 in the manual. And basically it starts by doing a winding, actually doing 19 windings, then doing a big loop and then going until you get to the wind 30, doing another big loop, then 36, another big loop, and then finishing off on uh, number 40, or 41 rather. So pretty basic. Um, it's just that these loops could be intimidating if you've never done it. So I'm gonna show you how to do it and try to simplify it as much as possible so that you can be successful building this and not be intimidated by it. And hey, if you've got a T50-2 sitting around and some 22 gauge wire, uh, I think it's 22 gauge, might be 28 gauge, yeah, 28 gauge wire, sorry, an enameled wire, then uh, sit down with me and let's build it. All right, so I've redistributed the majority of my mess to another part of my bench. And what we have here is a T50-2 toroid. And so uh, this toroid is exactly what's called for in the manual. And I happen to have one. I've also got some other toroids in here that we're gonna need. And I've even got one pre-wound. This came from my BIDX40. I'll probably wind a new one. Anyway, so the first thing we wanna do is get rid of any kinks in the wire. And to do that, you just hold the wire and pull it like so. that should do it. Now it's got to be done right hand turn. So we're going to start just as is shown in the manual. In fact, I would encourage you to follow along in the manual if, if you're unsure about this at all. So I'm going to start like I start all, all my toroids. I'm basically going to put a bunch of, put it all through the toroid for the first turn and then give it a pull. And then pull out the uh, rest of the wire, ensuring that I don't introduce any kinks, which is super easy to do when they're this long. And then put it through again. That's number two. If I lose track, I'll just use my magnifier and uh, keep and count my turns. And so as you can see, it's already a little bit <laughs> backwards here. It's hard when they're this long. All right, so there's number one, and we've got two, two turns going through it now. So I'm gonna actually pull this out a little bit. Could do that while it's still so short. Okay, so there's number two. And pull it out without introducing a kink. Number three. Give that pull right there. Basically, I'm just using my, my thumb to introduce some leverage 
and that tightens it up against the toroid real nicely. So that's number three. Number four. And we're just gonna take our time, go slow. Okay, and that's a pull on number four. And I always say it out loud so I can help keep, helps me keep track. And here's number five. Keep it spaced there and the tug on number five. and tug 19. So we've got 19 turns now, and, and I verified it a minute ago because I did lose track, but we can just verify it real quick. So we have, this is always the first turn, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So we're good. All right, so we've got 19 turns. And so now the next step, according to the manual here, is to um, make a loop between the 19th and 20th turns. So before we add another turn, we're going to introduce a loop. And I'm gonna make the loop fairly long just to make it easy on myself. So instead of going straight into this next turn, I'm going to wrap it around my finger. Or I could wrap it around pretty much anything else, honestly. I don't have to wrap it around anything, really, but I want to keep it tight. So we'll do turn 20. And make sure that that turn is nice and tight. I'm going to hold it like so. And tug 20. And now we've got number 20. All right, so we're back and I had a little bit of an interruption there, sorry about that. But we're picking up at turn 20. Now mind you, we are about halfway through this process. Now there's two more loops that are gonna have to be done. One at turn 30 and one at turn 36. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep going until turn 30 and then we'll do another loop. So 21, And 30. So now what we're going to do is spend just a moment and try to get this out of the way for a sec here. It's not working. It has a mind of its own. Uh, and I'm going to tighten this up just a little bit because we need to have plenty of room. And I did not really tighten this up right here. So um, these aren't wound very, I mean, they're tightly against the toroid, but they're not tight next to each other. So Going to spend just a moment here trying to get these all bunched up tightly, which because I did wind them so tight to the toroid is actually a little bit difficult, but that's a good problem to have. And that should be plenty of room. So we're at 30. So now Since we're at 30, we need to make a little loop 
and 31. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this tightly with this finger and give it a tug because I don't want to pull this. I don't want to pull these loops through, but I want to also make this one tight against it, this winding tight. So that's 31. And now the next stop is turn uh, 36. So now it's number two, it's 32. Thirty-five and thirty-six. All right, so I've noticed that there's a little bit of a bunch up right somewhere in here. So I'm just going to pull these and give it a little bit of a twist to try to hold that in place. And same thing goes here. It's just really easy. It's because it gets loose, so it looks like it's bunching up. It's really not. But just pull that and give a little twist. That twist can always be undone. So now we're at 36. And we have to do one more loop. And then we're gonna finish with off with 41. So there's there's 36. And loop 37 and again I'm gonna hold the toroid hold, hold the hold this this loop tight against the toroid hold the next turn tight okay so there's 37 and then get these next to the other ones here. And 38. And give a tug on 38. 39, come on the home stretch. And 40. And 41. And when you get to the, when you're getting this close to the other windings, you want to make sure you don't accidentally wind through them. <laughs> I've done that before. So there's 41. And I'm just going to cut this for ease of handling. So there we have it. There is L12 wound and ready to install. Uh, on the QDX board when it comes and when we get to that step. So um, there it is. That And it, honestly, guys, this is pretty easy. It's delicate in a couple of, you know, intricate, I guess is the word, uh, maybe tedious, but not difficult. Not difficult at all. If you can do 41 windings and just remember to leave three of them hanging loose, that's good enough. All right, well, that was it. Here's L12, ready to go for the QDX when it arrives uh, and we get to that step. So it's really gonna be pretty easy to put together. It's mostly some inductors, some passives, and you know, a few uh, other parts. But overall, I think the QDX is gonna be a pretty fun build. So I hope you're uh, as excited about building it as I am when it finally uh, comes. Definitely worth the wait. Now, if you want to see more videos like this, and there will definitely be more videos like this, and not all of them necessarily as long as this one, because this one was a fairly intricate piece, uh, but uh, the rest are going to be four, five, six minutes, somewhere in there. Uh, if you go look at my QCX mini tips, um, you'll see that those were all fairly short, save for a few. And that's the idea. We'll keep these short, keep it simple, and help you along with your build. So if you want to see that, subscribe. And click like so that others can see it too and, and uh, uh, know that you appreciated it. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.